Hi, I'm Dr. V. I'm Chief of the Spine Pain Program at Bloor Pain Specialists, and today I'm going to be talking about MRI. That's a very insightful question. You know, uh, most people don't know this, but smoking causes back pain. Most physicians know that. If you ask the average school-aged child, they'll tell you smoking is not good for you for cancer and for cardiac reasons. You ask a teenager, they might tell you, you know, cosmetic reasons, you know, skin changes and so on. But you know, when it comes to back pain, well, a big part of our back is related to how our discs cushion our bones. If our discs are not cushioning our bones, our bones are hitting each other, then we get arthritic type pains in our back. If our muscles are not receiving uh, good blood flow, well, they're cramping up, they're building up lactic acid, their lactic acid, even though we make it, is an acid, it's burning our muscle tissue, and that's causing us to have back pain. But when it comes to degenerative disc disease, when you think about the disc itself, well, the disc is an interesting tissue type. It doesn't have blood vessels. It's known as avascular, meaning that its nutrition, its oxygenation, the oxygen delivery is by something called diffusion or leaking. As blood vessels go by, some of that liquid, some of that oxygen will leak out of the blood vessel in the surrounding tissue, and that gets absorbed into the disc. Well, with nicotine use, nicotine narrows the diameter of a blood vessel. So instead of just having a giant pipe with lots of flow towards the disc or any other tissue type, muscle or otherwise, that nicotine causes those muscles inside the blood vessels to tighten up tight, 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 and you get less flow. More nicotine, less flow. And as you get less flow in a tighter muscular wall, you get less leak, and those discs get less nutrition. Then they start starving. Then they start become acidic, becoming acidic because they're building up their own lactic acid, and that changes their metabolism, and then they age. And that, uh, that uh, has been proven in basic science data, looking at dis uh, tissue in the laboratory, it's been looking, uh, proven in animal models and in human beings following us clinically over time. There's a 2010 paper on Canadian patients looking at smoking outcomes as they relate to low back pain. And with, uh, compared to non-smokers, daily smokers had more back pain. Now, that is a controlled finding, meaning that they did what's called a multivariate analysis. They looked at all kinds of other things. What do these people do? How active are they? What is their nutritional state? Are they obese? Are they thin, because weight also plays a role with gravity on our joints and so on. They looked at their education status, their work type, and so on, to see what's contributing so that they can isolate just the impact of smoking. And they still found that smoking resulted in more back pain. Now, the, the, the finding was most prominent in young people. And in fact, the worst group was young men. When young men between the age of 20 and 29 were smokers, they had a relative risk or an increase in their uh, likelihood of having uh, low back pain of 87%. 87%. Why? Well, as although there's a, a whole complicated slew of events biochemically, in short, the starvation of those tissues from nicotine caused their backs to age. So those young men had bold spines. And when they stop smoking, those spines don't become new again. That's unfortunate as well, because that data has been looked at in various studies. Uh, when nicotine is taken out of the picture, will the disc regenerate? It doesn't always. There's some improvement in some studies, but it's inconsistent. And that is how smoking as a lifestyle choice can impact somebody's low back pain by impacting their discs, inducing degenerative disc disease, along with you know, their musculature and so on. Thanks for watching today's video. Please like and subscribe below. If you have any questions that you'd like us to address in a future video, please leave them in the comments area. If you want us to answer any questions about your care specifically, please contact the clinic directly.